Good morning, guys. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. I'm Chad Lachance. I appreciate you joining us. Speaking of joining us, we've got in the boat with us Mr. Austin Parr. Now, you guys have seen Austin Parr and Fishful Thinker a whole bunch before. And if you're a fan of the show, you probably even saw him last week because this is part two. Yes, it is. Of the same day. Now, last week's show, we went smallmouth bass fishing at first light, first thing in the morning here on Chatfield Reservoir, Chatfield State Park, where we're at right now. Caught the fire out of the smallmouth. <laughs> yes, we did. Just caught him really good for a couple hours. And he promised us if we did that, when that bite died, we'd go walleye fishing. So this is part two. We're going to go walleye fishing right now. You're starting off with what? A gulp pinch crawler? Gulp on pinch crawler on a jig head. On a stand-up jig head of some sort. And uh, and I'm going to start out with a with a little black gulp leech on an eighth ounce mushroom head jig. and we're See if we can finesse some walleyes. So it's part two of our Chatfield Reservoir Beatdown with Austin Parr. Let's see what we can do. Fishful Thinker is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse. Gear up for unforgettable. Berkeley, your fish, our science. Abu Garcia, fish to win. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. There you go. All right, that didn't take very long at all. This feels like Mr. Walleye as Walter well. Doing now, we want to net these guys? Not this one here, but some of them I think we will definitely All want right. to. All right, now there you go. Now that, I mean, guys, we just, typical with Austin Parr, we just did an open about two minutes ago, and that's, I think that's your second cast after yes. we got lined up. <laughs> so you're saying they're going to get bigger than that. They should. But there's a whole bunch of them sitting here, guys, so this is going to be an interesting day. One thing I don't like to do is fight the situation. So Austin told me the, what is that thing, three inches? Three inch pinch crawler. Three inch pinched gulp crawler, which is big of a gulp junkie as I am, is not a bait that I use much. He told me that was gonna be the deal here today on that stand up head. It's a very specialty jig head that stands yep. up on the bottom. So my experience has been when wise will bite something like that, they'll also bite a gulp leech on a standard jig head on this mushroom head. So I've got that out. We'll see what happens, but um, it's a straight finesse bite. Absolutely. We're not, you're not snapping the bait much, you're dragging it, little hopping it all. Light pulls, little two or three inch rod tip motions. And, and I wanna point out that, you know, we're out here in September right now, and this is not normally something that, that you're doing right. this time of year, but sure. the bait fish are largely absent at the moment and therefore these fish are still on structure fairly heavily but not so much keyed in on a presentation like a blade bait however we'll probably throw it in a little bit just to see what yeah, we can we get. Yeah we have Berkeley thin fishers on the on the deck of the boat here guys and we will use those and and one thing I'll, I'll mention to our viewers real quick while uh, while while we're going through that you are a master with a blade bait and a what you call a glide bait or yep. a gliding jig uh, it's oh uh, no, nope, not a bite. And uh, and so you, the viewers on this show have seen you do that with us a bunch. Yeah. It's something we've done at Cherry Creek Reservoir, which is another place you guide, and just loaded the boat doing that. I mean, just loaded the boat at Cherry Creek. Killed them out there. And that blade bait sometimes is the ticket, but then there's other times that the finesse is a little bit better. So, you know, I was out here yesterday even and uh, caught them on both, but the finesse definitely was better than the, uh, the blade baits were. However, it's been changing some this time right. of year, right. and every day has been a little bit different. So we'll see what, what pans out here this morning. We're already mixing up real quick, and we caught one right off the bat in the first couple of minutes, and now we've been like 10 without a bite. That's what I'm throwing right there. That's a, that's a quarter ounce chrome Berkeley Thin Fisher. Uh, I've got it on 15 pound X9 braid, and I've got about a four foot long, eight pound Trilene 100 percent fluorocarbon leader on there. And, uh, and I'm on a six foot 10, medium light, uh, extra fast action, Fantasista rods, and, uh, and then the, the Ivo Garcia Revo Premier Reel. And this combo is extremely lightweight. It's extremely finesse oriented. Uh, it's a very, very, very sensitive rod. Overall, a great combo for this. Colorado Parks and Wildlife stocks a huge number of walleyes in here because the amount of put and take that happens. The other thing about this lake is it's a brood lake. So the walleyes originally come from here as well. They, this is where all the females come from, where they net them and, uh, and then artificially spawn them and release them back in here. So we showed you guys a tour of the fish hatchery one time where they make all these. Did you get one? All right, and uh, now we can show you the fish that came out of the hatchery. What'd you get? Feels like a walleye. Uh, that would be Walter. Yeah, he looks suspiciously like the last walleye. And this offshore fishing, one of the keys right here can be angles. Uh, oh, you got the blade out too. 
Okay, I didn't even know you did that. Yeah, there you go, guys. So there's the thin fisher. It's working. Oh, so far, one on the finesse, one on the little bit more of the power fishing type technique with the blade baits. And, it, and, and guys, it looks like we're just casting around in circles out here, but we are not. We are, not. We are fishing a very specific, uh, if the camera looks down, you can see we're on a very specific ridge. Uh, you can see the boat right here. We've got a ridge running across right here. And, uh, and we're fishing there. Those are one foot increments right there. And, uh, and so we're just fishing a ridge out here. And hopefully we did not spend a bunch of time graphing it because it's so shallow. If you look, it's only 10 feet on top. And, uh, and that means you don't want to graph it anymore than you have to. First of all, you're running around right over the top of your fish. And then second of all, um, your, your cone is only a couple, three feet wide, not even as wide as a boat. So there's one, nope, he came off. Fishful Thinker is brought to you by Lowrance, find, navigate, dominate. Sportsman's Warehouse, gear up for unforgettable. When you're casting across wind like this a little bit too, it's really important as soon as that bait hits the water to, to get that reel closed and get your slack line picked up. So many people want to click over with their handle and, and let it sit there and let the line get taken out with the wind. And we're not dealing with a lot right now, but when you're dealing with a, a presentation such as a jig or a blade bit or really anything, not having that bow in your line on a crosswind application is critical. You know, this lake's a really important lake from the standpoint that um, they use it as a brood lake for walleye. So the Colorado Parks and Wildlife comes here in the spring of the year of typically April, uh, late March, early April. They put nets out along the dam. They net males and females. They artificially spawn them and then they raise them in a fish hatchery. And, and we went and visited the fish hatchery out in Ray to see how they make them. And uh, it's, a, it's very fascinating. That whole facility is really fascinating. It's kind of a neat deal. So guys, if you want to learn about fishing structure with a, something like a blade bait, which is like these thin fishers we're throwing, or a Johnny Darter or a jig and wrap style bait like that, uh, a gliding jig, so to speak, what do you think are some of the biggest keys that a guy needs to keep in mind? Because I know you do a ton of it. Absolutely. And number one is certainly fishing to where the fish are, just like anything that well, you're doing. Well, sure, yeah, okay. Yeah, Captain but, Obvious. First of all, you got to be around fish. But okay. going <laughs> off of that point, though, in a situation like this, we have a little ridge line in front of us with a ridge line that extends down to the south, and it's immediately across wind if we're casting this direction, sure. whereas upwind going here. And as you're casting across wind, making sure that you eliminate that slack by immediately getting on your reel rather than trying to click right. it over and letting your line get ripped out by the wind yeah. is, is absolutely imperative. Right. And you find, uh, as a guide, do you find most of your customers don't do a great job of controlling slack line? Very few people do. That's and, what I think too. I mean, I personally close the, the bail by hand yes. every single time. Every pro you've ever seen does yep. that. And, and getting away from clicking that reel over, even if your reel is very smooth and clicks over nicely, yeah, that's is a not huge the point. deal. Yeah. That's the whole thing. And controlling, I get emails all the time. Oh, I need some different kind of line or a different reel yep. that doesn't twist. Let me explain something to you. You're taking a filament, you're turning it 90 degrees and wrapping it around a spool. Yep. Doesn't matter the dynamics, it doesn't matter what the deal is. Torsional rigidity is gonna come into play. You need to control that slack line. If you can, oh, I just got bumped. If you control the slack line, it doesn't matter uh, what kind of line you have. I can fish with fluorocarbon all day, never tangle it. I can hand it to a customer and three seconds later he's tangled it. And it's nothing yeah. to do with the reel or the line. It's all in how you control the slack. Missed fish on the blade bait. When you miss them on blades, do you ever throw something back to the general area, something like a gulp or like your little pinch crawler? I will sometimes, but in a situation that I just had right there, I came pretty tight on that fish. Gotcha. And I stung him stung enough that he's, bit, he's that probably I don't think like. It would be very effective. But hmm. I think sometimes that can really work well and you give them a little bit different application little different presentation when those fish are going from bait fish to leech. Right, right. That uh, could definitely trigger that bite. And the one thing to keep in mind over here, we just, we briefly discussed it a minute ago, but there are a lot of suckers in this lake and you can be tricked oh, into sure. fishing to suckers, suckers on the bottom. Just, back a, in just here. ask Troy Coburn. Hey yeah. Troy, we love you buddy, but. 
<laughs> Just kidding. No, for sure. I, I think that's, the funny thing is, I've sampled with Parks and Wildlife all over the state, a bunch of different places. I've never, I've never put a net anywhere that didn't come back full of suckers. Mm -hmm. Every lake in the state is full of suckers that I've ever been to. They look a lot like walleye stacked up on structure sometimes uh, Yes, too. they do, and they're, they're big. They're bigger than people think. People catch them and they're these little ones, but we've got five pounders in the net, oh, so yeah. he's gonna look just like a five pound walleye laying on the bottom, you know? All right. So let All me right, get the so net. Switch back again here. We got ourselves back and forth. And once again, you run to why his email address is walleye93. Every time I go walleye fishing with this guy, I get a walleye fishing lesson. There we go. I just hold him tight and he'll stay out of the net. And I think it's time for me to switch to that jig. That all of you know, two of the three walleyes we've caught now have all been on that stand-up head with the gulp pinch crawler. Huh, there you go. There he goes. And those are stocked by the bajillion in yes. here, right? So that's good. I mean, I ought to be able to catch one. <laughs> <laughs> pinched crawlers. Pinched crawlers. Gulp pinched crawlers right there, guys. Uh, it's not a bait you've ever seen on Fishful Thinker Television because we've never used them, but we're fixing to. <laughs> or I am. He's already using one, and it's paying the bills. <laughs> and then you're rigging it in the skinny end? Skinny end first. Right in the tail. Right, yep. And are you kidding just like me? you'd be rigging a standard night crawler. Not that you do that a whole lot. I was going to say, but... that doesn't matter to me. I have no <laughs> idea what that means. Rig it up on there. Just throw it up on there like that. Yep, give it a push. There you go. There you go. Now this is a, normally I would throw any kind of gulp on a Berkeley mushroom head, but you wanted a stand-up head of some sort. Yeah, stand-up heads have been better. Huh. All right. Well, given that he's out, fish me three to nothing. One's a fluke, two's a theory, three's a pattern. Time to tie his lure on. <laughs> fish. Got him. First throw with the pinch crawlers guy, I want to point out, first throw with the pinch crawler. That's why you pay attention to what the other guy's doing. So, uh, and here it comes. I can probably handle him if you, oh, you already got the net. All right, and I'll keep him tight right there. And that is literally my first cast ever with a gulp pinch crawler. Uh, and there it is, guys. There's the crawler right in the corner of the mouth. And uh, that's why you go with a guy who's got walleye in his email address, because he told me that would work. And he wasn't kidding. There it is, guys. I just put that on a second ago. I showed you guys that as I was tying it on. That was literally a second ago. And there is one average walleye. Fishful Thinker is brought to you by Berkeley. Your fish, our science. Abu Garcia, fish to win. Sportsman's Warehouse, gear up for unforgettable. You know, the other thing that it was kind of designed for was fishing on slow death rigs. And, you know, we, I don't fish them a whole lot, but they certainly are, they're super effective and, and you can feed them up on there and that pinch crawler getting, uh, you know, get that spinning action on a bottom bouncer rig for anyone pulling for walleyes across an open expanse on, on structure, that can be really productive as well. But notice we're just barely jigging these things. There's not any hopping going on. I didn't at all. jig mine. Yeah, I'm just straight up tip down dragging. Yep. I watched him do it and just pulling it on the bottom. Just for the record, if you had tube jigs in a group of smallmouth, that same situation works. Throw it out, let it go to the bottom. Yeah. Point the rod tip down and just drag it on the bottom. Straight up dragging tubes. Never letting them leave the bottom. And uh, first of all, you have perfect depth control. Yes. You know where your bait always is in the water column. And I don't think you spook fish with that so much. Whereas a bait that's hopping, I've seen enough scenarios where you can spook fish with it at times I would too. Agree. All right, there we go, guys. So it, it's nice of Austin to let me catch a couple of them because normally when you go with Austin, I'm just going to swing that one, Austin, because I th oh he pinched that's my he got right. my crawler though, right in the tip of the hook, tip of the snout. Easy fish, easy. He'll come off there real quick. So there's another one. Now you said we'd catch a whole bunch of these and you're not lying. Uh, and that's, that guy's is what, 15 inch, 15, 14, 16, 15 inch, inch yeah, fish. Yeah. And he's gotta be a couple more inches to keep, not that we're keeping any of those today. But the couple things so far to take away from this, first of all, your bread and butter's working, has been. So yeah. the pattern held up. A couple fish nipped the blade. They really didn't want to eat my gulp uh, leech. leech nope. But as soon as I put the pinch crawler on the stand up head, yeah. Now it's doing this as you drag it, and it's mm -hmm. just got a different look to it, and now I'm catching them too. So thanks for the tip. Austin just said, I have to identify the bite before the customer does. 
I would say that 70% of my customers, I have to tell their bit. Yeah. When they're jigging a gulp minnow or a tube jig, I have to tell them their bit. And people, oh, I've been fishing my whole life. Then watch your line or watch your rod tip. And that's the hardest part of hosting TV shows. I have to address the camera. You guys see me make mistakes because if you just watch that rod tip right there, in this condition, your line's not going anywhere. You just watch that rod tip. If that thing deflects, bends any more than what that jig will put on there, that's your cue. It, it. You're not going to always dunk, feel this bite on any of it. You're not. Well, in fact, half the time what you feel is the fish spitting it out because they, they nip it real gentle. They spit it out real quick. It's, uh, it's all about the rod deflecting. And it's good to hear that you have the same issue with clients that I do where yeah. you have to you have to know how much your rod can or does or doesn't bend under a given load. When, when you're jig fishing like this, I kind of describe it as hooking a, a wet towel almost underneath the water. You just, yeah. It just, just all of a sudden heavy. feels a little heavy, yep. but it's not pulling away. Nope. But it's definitely uh, not a rock either. Not, so. right. and, and it'll just bend the rod tip a little bit and it'll feel, you know, I call it intelligent pressure. Yeah. What are you feeling for? You're feeling for intelligent pressure, but watch the rod tip. I mean, a lot of them, I'll look at the rod tip to verify the bite before I do anything else. Yep. Especially pertinent when you're dealing with a technique like Lindy rigging as well, I almost always see the bite before a customer feels that bite. You know, you'll oh, see that rod yeah. tip load up just a little bit. Yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. I'll say, well, you have a bite. Yeah, this be your cue. Yep. Yeah. And it's funny because it doesn't matter what the experience level of my customers, the claimed experience level is, the vast majority of them I have to tell, at least in the beginning of the trip, to set the hook. There we go. Nice. Mm-hmm. Right when we're getting ready to go, there's a better one there, I think. No, maybe not. I thought he's bigger size. than that. That's the first one I felt bite. He actually was like tick, an oh. actual tick on it, and then I picked up and it was just total slack. I'm yep. like, oh, the jig is gone. He's got it. <laughs> All right, come here, buddy. Nice. There we go. So another fish on another spot. And I want to point out that that stand-up head's working pretty good because that's right at the top of the snout again. And there's another one, guys. These are starting to look pretty familiar.